Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. We are gonna make, we're not gonna make, we're gonna embellish uh, some of our pages. Well, we're gonna embellish this side of this, of this page setup. It's, it's a mirrored effect, so that's why I went ahead and did one side and then we'll do this side together. So let me show you what I did really quick. I'm not finished, finished, because I feel like this needs something here, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So we're gonna move on after that. After this, uh, we're just gonna leave it like that and we're gonna move on to the next thing. And so we can come back and add and move things around and all of that later. So I've got this pocket uh, created here. Oh, oops, can't see. And I put a photo mat here, not pocket. So I've got this flap, I've matted it with this pretty paper and then I've got a photo mat on the back. And then I've got this matted with this paper. This is one of these shades of color. And then we've got a little flip. I just added two sheets of paper, but you can add as many as you want. And we're gonna do that little bit of a cluster embellishment there. And then that's what we got going on on the back. So I wanted to show you really quick. So I picked this shades of color. Let me grab them really fast. So this paper collection is the Hello Pink Autumn from Prima, and that's what I'm calling this album. And I have a whole playlist for this album. I will link it up here and down below. You can follow step by step. If you, if you go to that playlist and hit play all, it will take you in order. And then you can go back to your view history and it should take you back to where you were when you stopped watching. So in the last video you saw, we made the shaker embellishment. Right, and I tucked a little picture. I didn't, I haven't glued it down or anything, but I tucked a little picture of my granddaughter in there. And I just wanted to show you again how awesome this little shaker element is. But I will tell you uh, that I don't think it's gonna work here. <laughs> so we're gonna have to end up switching this out with something else because when I turn the page, I have to hang on to it or it falls out. So either that or we're gonna have to add some thicker embellishments behind it. I don't know. That's my dog. My poor doggy got groomed yesterday. I'm actually a little upset. I have a standard poodle, and she's white, and we've always left her ears really long, and for whatever reason, the groomer cut them off, cut the ear hairs off, <laughs> and I'm not happy. She doesn't look like my puppy. I know it'll grow back, but anyway, so she's shaking her head because they pull, they actually do pull hairs out of their ears so that they don't get infected but anyway um so yeah i just wanted to show you that this is probably going to have to be moved around to somewhere else but it's a fantastic little embellishment it just is going to have to go somewhere else okay so we are using the basically amazing foundations this is a printable set of templates in my etsy shop and we are using the pumpkin background design. So my templates, you have to print them out. They do not come in a book form. It's super easy to make. You just laminate, print out one set on regular paper. You laminate the paper. You print out another set on cardstock and you stick it to the laminated page. So what I do, it depends on what it's for, but like this one, I do have uh, the actual cover because you have to trace it onto chipboard the cover page on onto cardstock and then the mat for that. I put that on top so it's all there ready to go when I need it. So if I didn't want to print this mat out, I could trace the mat. So super easy to make. I have a whole playlist on my workbooks. I have several different ways I've made workbooks. You can do it as simple as get you a binder, get you some page protectors, put your pa put your pages in the page protectors. And it's the same thing. I just like it this way because I use the heck out of my, my workbooks. <laughs> Especially this foundations book. We have been using this book since 2019, December of 2019, um, all the way up till now. We've pretty much made, I don't know, I don't know how many albums we've made with this set of templates in, on film that we've made here together on YouTube. <laughs> So I've used the heck out of this book. So it was well worth the time to do it. It does take some time, not gonna lie. Okay, so we're using this set of templates and we're also using the, I'll show you, we're also using the Graceful Decorative Edge set of templates. So what you're gonna need is, I already did the one side, so these are all, you need two of each, okay? So this is 54A, page 54A, which is the mat for the main base page. This is the A size album main base page. See it there? So this is the mat. I did print it out. 
And this is, so what you have to do, this is the Shades of Color, and that one is number 19 from the Shades of Color, and this is what that Etsy listing looks like. So this is my new newest set of Shades of Color 2. And I picked 19. These are the colors that go with this paper collection the best. That's why I've got them all separated out like this so that I can easily, you know, match it up to whatever paper I'm trying to uh, work with, right? So I'm going to show you something in a minute, the difference. If you try these different pages uh, with the other patterned paper, it's, it's amazing how, how different it looks. Okay, so I printed the shades of color first, and then I printed page 54A, uh, the plain one, on, uh, on top of the shades of color. So I had to go through my printer twice. So you need two of those. And then on page 14 AD, I'm sorry, not 14 AD, on page 61 AD, which is the mats for page 14 AD, I printed this page out and it, um, you know, it was the 12 by 12, so I had to cut it down. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like this. So I had to cut it down to run through my printer and then I actually printed it on this side because I could see it better and then I just trimmed them out, right? So obviously you just need one page of this because it has both mats on it. Okay, um, so you need that page and that's all you need out of the foundations. Oh, oops. All right, so there's the other half of that page, just like that. <laughs> And then out of the basically amazing graceful decorative edge add-on, again, these are available in my Etsy shop. They are a printable, not a physical item, but I made the workbook exactly the same. All right, so here's what I did. So I printed page 37A in the pumpkin background design. See that? I don't know how well you can see it. My, my, in my, my viewfinder, monitor viewfinder? My view monitor, my, my view, what is that called? Have you guys had this problem lately where you can't remember words? <laughs> I've been doing this a lot today, today, this month, this this year. I can't, I just don't know how to talk anymore. Anyway, the, pump, the new pumpkin background design. So I printed that onto white cardstock, right? And then I cut it out. So you need two of these. And then I cut it out. And then the mat for that is, this one is 84A. So I took this piece up here and I traced it out twice onto the green shades of color, which is color number one. So I, so I traced that twice, cut it out, inked it up. And then this one is the scripty papers. I'll show you that in just a second. So I took page 84A and I took and traced onto my scripty papers. Instead of printing the whole thing out, I just traced this onto my scripty papers. And my scripty papers, if you're not familiar, look like this. So this is the Etsy listing, or is this the title page? It, the Etsy listing photo looks just like this as well. So it's a set of printable scripty papers that come in different formats. So you get the 13 by 19 format, which has the 12 by 12 and the six by six on them. So if you have a large format printer, you can print, print that size. It comes in the 11 by 17 size. It comes in the 12 by 12 size and then the eight and a half by 11 landscape and portrait size. It also comes in, the same paper will come in the original, the vintage and the black and white. So you get a lot you get a lot of bang for your buck with these scripty papers. So, and they go with a lot, a lot of projects. And it's just a nice little, it's just have to have something, something, you know, behind your focal point. It just, I don't know, it just makes a project look way better in my opinion. <laughs> it just finishes a project off really nicely. So I printed this one off. This was the vintage version of the first three there. And then I traced it out and then inked it up cut it and inked it up. So I'll have all of those, all of those printable things linked down below if you want to check them out. So again, you need two of that mat, you know, two of this, two of that. And then that's all we need out of the graceful right now. And then one more printable thing we need is from the photo mats essentials. 
I printed one of this page right here, which is the four by, uh, four by six photo mats. I printed it just onto, this is 28 pound white paper. I used one of them already. And then I printed this page, which is the three by four photo mats. Um, and I've already used two of those. So same, it's on that 28 pound paper. So first thing I'm gonna tell you is we need to change this magnet out. But before we do that, I wanted to show you. Let me just put this here. I had was thinking of using the purple color under here, and I just kind of wanted to show you the difference. Um, let me move this. How different the background color behind your actual patterned paper, how different it makes it look. It just gives a whole different vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you see the difference um, with this purple versus with this pink? I don't know. It just, there's something very unique about these shades of color too. Well, the shades of color, original ones are really great too, but it can change the whole feel of your layout just by using a certain color. So both of these went perfectly and so did the green. The green looks lovely with it as well. There's all the colors I chose to go with this paper collection looks great with this. So it all looks different behind this paper. Do you see what I'm saying? It all made this paper look different. But I chose this pink color. I just like the way this pink color looked in this layout. So I just wanted to show you how different a color can make, um, can make the layout look. So it is so early in the morning right now. I'm not used to filming this early in the morning. So what I was saying is we're gonna have to switch this out to a magnet. So I'm gonna do that first before I forget. And I'm just, well, actually I could take this paper backing off. Let me get this. And I'm just gonna lift this up. I always have high hopes that um, I don't, I won't need um, a magnet, but you know, I can just, where I can just use the magnet saver versus, you know, magnet on magnet, but I'll keep trying. <laughs> I always end up putting thicker, more, th I always end up putting thicker things under there. So it's like, I don't know, less is not more for me. <laughs> more is more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a goofball. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to grab a magnet. I have all of my magnet resources linked down below. There's several places that I get magnets from. All right, so I'm going to stick this down. I'm going to get my fancy glue dots here. These are the permanent, they're the large ones, and they're blue. Uh-oh, what's something's, it looks like there's something stuck, but there's not. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to roll it right onto that magnet. And these are super sticky, super sticky. Don't you take that magnet in there. There we go. Super sticky. I really like them. Um, it's hard to get used to dealing with it, this, but I really like them. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna gently, I need to be careful that I don't stick my page down. Maybe I can roll this off. Ah. Okay, so we stick that down. I'm gonna put a piece of tape over that. And then we'll just mat it. We'll go ahead and mat it. I'll just try to go over that exact same tape. <laughs> See, I put change the magnet. Oh, change to magnet. Not the magnet. <laughs> that is scrapbook.com tape. Quarter of an inch. And this is a bone folder. It's a really good burnisher. And I have it linked in my Amazon, I think. But I like it. It's, it's the ergonomic one. So I, I really like that one. And then I am going to mat this. I'm going to go ahead and mat it with the, with the pink uh, mat for this page. So I am going to use my ATG.
You could use glue. You could use wet glue. You totally can. The reason I chose to use my ATG in this circumstance is I was thinking um, something might change down the road on this one, on this layout, but maybe not. Now that I've changed the magnet, I probably could have just let it be, but, you know, just used like liquid glue. But it's hard to get pages like mats up off of the liquid glue. <laughs> it's actually impossible. So, all right, so I'm just going to stick this down here. Did I already tell you guys I was going to put some time stamps down below in the description box down there? I didn't get that on there very good. All right, so there's, there's that. Perfect. And I have cut these up here into angles to make a tag, and I need to cut this one. So I used, when I made these, I used this corner chomper, this photo corner chomper. It's got the angle and the photo on it, so I used the angle part to make those angles. But I also have this corner chomper, which has got a large angle and a small angle. And believe it or not, the, the large angle is actually smaller than the angle on that pink one. So it actually mats it perfectly. And I was a little surprised, a little shocked on that because I thought when I first got this corner chomper, I thought that the large would be the outside and the small would be the mat for it, but it's not, it's too small. So I'm not really sure, um, I'm not really sure why they did it that way, but either way, it works out. Oh, I need to ink up this edge. Oh, look what I did, you guys. I, I changed out, I, I'm using my double square. I changed out the ink pad, so this is now walnut stain and black soot, and then I put the vintage photo that was here, uh, I put that in the single, because I've been using the black, you know, I've been stamping with the black. Okay, so I just want to show you I did that. It's very handy to have them both right there together. So I'm gonna mat this, same way. I'm gonna remove tape backing from there and I'm going to use my tape printer again. See that would have looked nice too. Wouldn't it have? It would have looked nice. It's not as much of a contrast but it still would have been nice. And I could have probably just used liquid glue on this one. Again you can use whichever tape you would like. I think I did use liquid glue on that one. I have a resource where I get tape refills that aren't as expensive as the Tape Depot. And I actually learned about it from Lindsay from the Frugal Crafter. I will link it down below. And it is specifically for, what is going on here? It is specifically for the pink ATG. So I'm linking the one that is for that tape, uh, what's it called? The Advanced Tape Glider. All right, so now you can see on this one, I have, I have punched a hole and I'm using hole reinforcements. And these are the ones I'm using. So you can see they're foiled hole reinforcements. I did this myself. I will show you how to do that in just a second, but let's finish this first. So I'm gonna find the center of my tag here and I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil. And I'm gonna try, where did I do with my hole punch? Here's my hole punch. I'm gonna turn the book around and I'm gonna punch this out. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna punch it out. I'm gonna put the hole reinforcement on there first. <laughs> Jeez. should be the perfect center it is now I'm gonna punch it out boy I'm just I'm just not with it today okay. and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put one on the back side okay so then I have added 
some of this twine, this, um, it's on, what's it called? Um, I've had it, I've added some of this twine and Baker's twine. This is, this has a name. So I'm going to use a combination of both of these as like the, the faux pool. So this is the pool, 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 P-U-L-L. -L. <laughs> so this is black and white. I've added it to my Amazon and this is some twine. And we're just going to put it through there. It's really just decorative, obviously. So I just put them together and make a loop. And then I'm going to stick them through there. And pull them tight. Not too tight, but tight. Then I'm just going to cut them off where they're a little bit above there. Okay, so let me show you how I did those. Okay, so I use these Avery reinforcement labels. They're um, easy to find in office places. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put them in my Amazon list. And I do, it's so simple. It's the, I've done this before and I have a video on it. I think I might even have a specific video on it. So I'm taking my walnut stain and just giving them a little bit of color. I'm not going too heavy. Of course, you can go darker. simple and then I take this is oops look at that I need a new piece or something where's my foil this is the foil that I use this is reactive foil uh, let's see it's you know it's actually made for the mink machine but it um, it's perfect for this uh, I guess I could try to use this instead of getting a new piece. Let's see what it does. Let's see. So then I take a glue stick. This is the glue stick I use. It's a Uhu stick. And this is like the quickest foiling method ever. So I'm just gonna do a little bit to see if I can get anything to transfer. And then I like it to I like to let it sit and maybe even burnish a little bit. But I'm pretty sure you can use any glue stick. I, this is just the one I prefer for this technique. Okay. And then you peel it away and voila. You've got some foiled hole reinforcements. Now these I actually, see, because there's not that much foil left on this paper, it didn't foil as much as these did, but it's still the same effect. Do you see what I'm saying? So you can use all your leftover pieces for this technique. So let's just go ahead and keep using the same paper or the same piece of foil. So I'm just gonna get some glue on here. And let's just go right here. Pull that back. Oh, I didn't get very much on there at all, did I? Just have a sip of coffee while that sits. I got this. This is a handmade coffee mug. I can't tip it to show you without spilling it, but it, I got it at the St. James Art Fair, 
we have it's local I don't know I'm pretty sure it's just local it's this giant art fair that we have every year so it's handmade but it's got bees and things on it I'll have to show you when it's not full <laughs> I love it and it's actually from a local artist as well so that's pretty cool okay so that's better I got a little bit more foil on there so yeah easy 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 so I'm just gonna add this to my to my stash over here these I had in my in my binder but these need to dry a bit so but anyway so these are a little bit more heavy and that's probably because I used a newer sheet when I did those versus this one just now but this is a very distressed foiled look and I love it I love this technique so I'm gonna sit that over there in my crafty companion and I'm gonna move this that's pretty all by itself you could you could print from your laser printer you could print a solid something or another and then laminate uh, or send this piece right here and that paper through your mink machine or your laminator and that would be a really cool looking a piece of paper wouldn't it it would be so neat okay so we'll have to add some more foiling into our project now won't we all right so we've got that let's do this backside really quick because it's super simple this is the 4x6 photo mat. I'm going to grab my 4x6 stamp from my stamp set. It's linked down below if you want to see if it's in stock or not. Let me show you it real quick. Hmm? You think I like my stamp set? I, <laughs> I love my stamp set. Okay. All right. So... I'm pretty sure that, yeah, the only other thing I need is a label, and I'll have to get that out in just a second. So, I'm going to attach this down with my tape runner. Tape, again, you could use liquid glue, but since this is just paper, um, some glues will show through. And I'm going to stick this over here. Okay, now I need that little label. So this is my ephemera holder or ephemera keeper. I actually made this book um, on, on film, in video, in YouTube. <laughs> and I will link that playlist up here for you guys and down below. Every time I pull this out, I get asked about it. So I'll just, that's why I'm just telling you where to find how to make it. All right, so there, and this is also where I keep all of my whole reinforcements that I've colored or foiled. There's a bunch of foiled ones over here. Yup, 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 yup. Okay, so I have a section for my printable labels. And which one did I use? So these are, is that the same one? These are a set of labels that are available in my Etsy shop. I will link them down below. I wish I had the, I wish I had grabbed the listing photo to show you. But I will link them specifically down below. These are super handy to have. Whoop. Them. No. These are just really, really handy to have because they come in all different colors and shapes. You can just get the rectangles if you want. You can just get the circle ones. You can just get the square ones. Um, and they also, some of them are also included with the basically amazing add-on scrap journal. So, if you have that one as well, you can get the labels from there. So, I just trimmed it up really quick. I think I'll ink it. And I'm not going to stamp anything on it. I'm just going to attach it down. And I am going to use liquid glue this time. So, I'm going to try to do the exact opposite when I'm putting things down. So, like, since this one's on this side, I'm going to put this one on this side. Does that make sense? So, I'm going to do that with this as well. So this is our glitter glue, and I'm just going to put this over here. How far down do I have it? Okay. 
There. So now that little flap is done. All right, so now let's work on this insert. It's so cute, it's so cute. Let me, sh let me show you, let me bring it up to you. Look at that. Is that not cute? Okay. Matter of fact, I am going to take this out. Well, look how good that looks right there. Just that, just that together. You could just put photo mats in here if you wanted to. You could, um, you could actually put a photo mat on here. You could put a five by seven or two four by sixes or four three by fours. Whatever you want to do. You can have a whole bunch of loose things here. You can just have a photo mat there. It doesn't matter. Whatever strikes your fancy. Oh, see, I heard that. So we might have to put this in a pocket or something. We'll see. All right, so I'm gonna leave this out. Let's do the back side of it first, because that's easiest. So, um, this, the pumpkin design is gonna be on the inside. So let's do this back side. I'm just gonna actually glue this down. I'll show you, I'll use liquid glue to show you that you don't have to use tape on our glue. This is 80 pound white cardstock, so the liquid glue doesn't really show through it. Now if I'd have printed this out, which I could have just printed it out on like the 28 pound paper, um, then I wouldn't want to use wet glue because it will show through. But my favorite, favorite go-to glue is the fabric tuck. If I could just get, if I could only get one liquid glue, it would be the fabric tag. And that looks like this. If I could only get one liquid glue, this would be the one that I would get. Yep, yep. But I love that one and I love my art glitter glue. I love my tape runner tape. I love my rolls of adhesive. I love my glue sticks. I love, I just love it all. I love it all. All right, now I'm going to take these two 3 by 4 photo mats and I'm going to stamp 3 by 4 on them. Whoops. I grabbed the, the base of the ink pad instead of the lid. And if you don't have my stamp set, which I'm not sure why you don't, but if you don't, <laughs> You can just use you can just use a combination of the numbers like we used to before. You can just do that as well. If that's what you got. Alright, I think I am going to well I can just use this as reference. I'm gonna grab my ruler because I want to have them. halfway centered and halfway in line, I guess. And I'm going to use my tape runner tape. The tape runner tape also is really quick. You don't have to, there's no dry, dry down time, so you don't have to wait on that. And it holds really well, so. All right, I think I need to quit drinking coffee. I've had too much coffee. There we go. And I'll do the same up here. Gotta get up on my tippy toes. Here is a fussy cut element out of the paper and of course I don't have that paper right in front of me or do I? No, nope, that's not it. Well, uh, I think it's from this paper. Yeah, it's this this one right here. So I just fussy cut two of these out of the paper and 
we're using them as embellishments. So that's one, that's on that side. So let's put this one on this side, like so. So cute. And I am going to use liquid glue again. Oh, I'm going to ink it first. Did I ink it already? Oh, my candle went out. Shoot. So I'm just going to put glue in the middle so that you can still tuck. So you can still tuck your photo in there. Perfect. Tag on it. And get me another one. That's probably hot. I like having my my uh, candles lit. Also love this lighter that I got on Amazon. Love it. I have I always have my salt candles and my these are eight hour tea lights. So I always have them linked in my my specific list for each project. So I'll add this one to it because you charge it. It's a chargeable thing and it has an on off. So nobody can just come by and go bloop bloop unless they know how to turn it on. And it's, it's so awesome. I love it. And it's so sleek looking. And the charge lasts forever. No running out of, you know, that, those big, large clickety clickities. You know, I, those, those actually hurt my, my hand. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is done. The backside is done. So, all right, super cute. So let's go on this side. And what we need is two sheets of coffee stained paper, which I have right here. I need, I need the mat really fast. So I need the mat for that. So the 84A is what I'm going to use. And I think I'm going to do it this way. So I've got two sheets here, so I'm just going to trace around, and this way it'll fit perfectly inside, inside the, um, the flip. This is actually one part of an envelope, so there's another part that you attach onto here and it would be a very large, like, envelope pocket kind of thing. I don't know why I call it an envelope, it's like a pocket, it's like a floating pocket. I guess that's an envelope, well, you know, there you go. <laughs> You're welcome. I solved that problem. <laughs> All right, I've got my paper trimmer. I'm just going to cut them both at the same time. Right on that line. Ooh, that one's like a little ripped up down there. No big deal. I'm going to put this in my scraps. But... This is coffee stain paper that I coffee stained myself, but I will link some, I will link Etsy down below in the description box. I will link some shops from there. Well, I'll just link coffee stain paper and Etsy if you want to. There are some really great Etsy sellers out there that uh, make fantastic coffee stained paper. Um, I do not sell it myself. So I just, on one, on the back page, I just put a strip of tape runner tape, right? And I'm gonna stick that down and then I'm gonna flip the front page up and I'm gonna do another strip. Right, and then I'm just gonna take it and do a few strips on this top part here and fold it down. So now we have our little booklet. If you don't want to use coffee stain paper, you can use regular paper. You can use uh, parchment paper. You can use old book pages. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can use if you don't like coffee stained paper. You could print out some of the shades of color if you wanted to. Uh, and, you know, just print them on paper and use that as your pages. Okay, before I mat this with this piece, I am going to do this cluster here. And then we're going to do a little stamping. All right, I just grabbed the elements that I needed. So these are also fussy cut out of the paper collection. 
and I just did the identical thing and then this is one of the larger labels that are included in that label set so I'm just gonna make my cluster and I'm gonna do it I'm gonna just mirror it the other side and we're gonna glue it together and I'm just actually let's just I'm not gonna glue it onto there yet but let's just glue it let's just glue it together and I'm trying to make it the same to have the same look you know what I mean and then this okay I need to stamp on that first okay so this the it says our story that's part of my stamp set and I've already got it mounted on this block and I used the black so let me grab that and I'm gonna put it over here this side And that is black soot distress oxide that I'm using. I just think it helps it stand out just a little bit. And then let's, I'm going to put some glue here and then I can nope. Does that seem right? No. I'm trying to make it look the same. There we go. It's just the story part got cut off a little bit. That's okay. Right? So then this one will be on this side. And what I'm going to do before I glue it down, actually, let me. glue that to the to the label so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace out exactly where this is gonna sit and that way we can do a little stamping so maybe right there Oops. Here we go. Let's just go with it. I keep moving it. So I'm just tracing out where it's going to be. But before I do the stamping, I think I'm going to put the bling on the cluster we just made. You see the, the little the little pieces here? And then there's some little gemstones on the R story. So I'm gonna do that really quick. I need I need these. And I need these. And I need my jewel picker and some glue. So I think I'm gonna do the tiny little the little tiny whoa wow you definitely didn't need that many sparkly gemstone ones first and I'm just going to take the art glitter glue and I'm going to just barely 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 put a dot where I want to put them then I'm going to take the jewel picker and place it down Just like that right and then I better put this on there before it dries out that tip will dry up really quick so then I need three of these and something I noticed about these particular ones this shaker mix is on one side if you glue it down one way it looks like like a drop of water if you glue it down another the other way the opposite way it looks more sparkly I don't know how to explain it but you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how to explain it to you guys in the right way. But it's pretty it's pretty cool. 
All right, I think there's three sizes in here. I just need to make sure that I get all three sizes. So, and what I mean by that is if you actually glue this upside down, it looks more crystally than if you glue it flat side down. The flat side down makes it look a little bit more like, um, like a water droplet. Did I use all three sizes? I did. So there's one size. That's the largest. And then this one here is the medium. See, it, won't, it doesn't want to flip over. There we go. And this one goes on this side right here, I think. Oh, that doesn't look right. It goes here. And then the, one of the tiny ones goes up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of move them out of the way and put little droplets of glue where I want them. And, and I'm going to work, work fast and get them on there. So now we can let that dry while we're stamping. It's probably already dry, but while we're stamping the little parts. These were a fun purchase. I really enjoy these. I really do. I'm really enjoying using these. Very fun. Fun purchase. Okay. So now I'm going to stamp the little hearts and this is also a part of my stamp set but if you don't have the little hearts of the little heart stamp set you don't you can skip this step altogether it's not a heart stamp set it's included with the stamp set <laughs> but what i like to do is i like to stamp once twice a third time and once twice a third time and once And then you can like get some faint ones just you know it just you can see just a hint just a barely a hint so that's it that's all I'm gonna do it just adds something it adds something to the the embellishment cluster it just looks so nice without being overpowering right isn't that cute all right now I'm gonna add the glue I'm going to use a liquid glue and I'm actually just going to go straight on, straight on here. And then I might do this little tip here so it gets glued down. I guess I could have used the glue to glue it down here too as well. So let me do that. <laughs> let me grab it. All right. So I'm just going to put the glue onto the mat, not the cluster that we made. And I'm going to mat it. Simple as that. So they'll go in the book like that. So let me show you. Let's install them. Okay. So this is the one we just made and it's going to go right here. And then here's the one I'd already made and it's going to go right there. So now it looks like that, right? Doesn't that look cool? I mean, I feel like we still need something right here but I just don't know what yet. So we're gonna call this this video done for now because I don't want to over embellish because I've still got a long way to go in this album. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I need to, and the embellishments need to last is all I'm trying to say. All right, you guys, please let me know what you think. I love when we do this mirror effect. I think it's a really pretty look, especially in large scrapbooks. So I really enjoy doing that. And let me know what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And turn that bell notification on so that you get notified when I upload a video. Don't forget to check out the description box. It's got tons of good information down there. Tons of links. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.